There's a tactic I call the UK gaslight. A gaslight is, quote, to psychologically manipulate someone so that they question their memories, perception, or sanity. The UK gaslight involves using data from the UK to argue that divergent evolution isn't real or that race differences are specific to the United States. They'll show data like this and like this, and it's meant to shock puppies into thinking that what they think about race is false, that their day-to-day -day experience is false, or that they're just seeing things because of their deep racism. But when you look at the prison population in the UK, you see close racial ratios to the United States. Asians in the UK refers mainly to Indians, Pakistanis, and Bangladeshis, but can also include Arabs or Iranians. And the UK blacks are slightly less overrepresented than the US blacks, and maybe that's because they're actually slightly less criminal than the US blacks, or maybe it's because the courts in the UK go easy on blacks, whereas in the United States, the cops and courts treat the races the same. This is also reflected in the economic economics of these groups. Pakistanis and Bangladeshis in the UK have a higher unemployment rate, higher welfare use, and are more likely to be NEETs, people not in education, employment, or training. They also have lower incomes, and these don't look like they're that much lower, but remember that whites in the UK probably live in cheaper places than non-whites do on average. For example, the cost of living in Cardiff, Wales, is 39.5% cheaper than London, so it wouldn't be crazy to think that whites in the UK have something like a 20% lower cost of living on average, given that some whites are going to live in places like Cardiff, and some whites are going to live in places like London. London. This is not something we should care too much as taxes are paid on nominal income so it's not like the higher cost of living of these groups is coming out of the British people's pockets. But the point is that if you shave 20% off the black in income in the UK, it would be about the same as the ratio of black to white income in the US. It's just more evidence for the unexceptional state of race in the UK, as in the US, as in Canada, as in France, etc. And all of this is what we would predict given the results of several IQ studies in the UK, which repeatedly, and from different authors, show a racial pattern similar to that of the United States. Of course, it always comes down to the SAMP. Are these representative samples? They try to be. Are they? Well, all these data points seem to fit. And these racial disparities also exist on the LNAT, or the UK equivalent of the LSAT, and on the BAR vocational course exam. You can see the racial averages with the LNAT, and with the BAR, they don't give averages, but percents outstanding, very competent, and merely competent, and the remainder from this are the people who didn't pass. A similar racial stratification exists on the UK CAT, the UK equivalent of the MCAT, and it's about one standard deviation between whites and blacks on the UK CAT. And all this is interesting given that the LNAT, BAR, and UK CAT are supposed to be very elite, and so we shouldn't be seeing much in the way of race differences up here. This is because at the elite level, you're supposedly only getting the very best, period, regardless of race. But that's not what we see. We actually see the races attempting the UK CAT, LNAT, and BAR in rough proportion to their slice of the UK population. Perhaps a more representative test would be the averages for firefighter applicants in the UK. Unfortunately for this, we only have the categories white and non-white, so it's hard to make much of this without knowing who's in the non-white category. And we can also look at PISA scores, and we can compare the UK to the US on the PISA scores. Keep in mind that Asian in the US is equivalent to the UK categories of Indian and Chinese, and Arabs in the US are classified as white. In the UK, Indians, Arabs, Arabs, Pakistanis, and Bangladeshis are classified as Asian, while Chinese, Korean, and Japanese are classified as Chinese. And one thing we can see is that the gaps on the PISA tests are much smaller in England, which is this part of the UK, than they are in the US. But we also have data from Wales in 2012. Wales is this part of the UK. In addition to all the scores being lower than that of England, they show a racial gap similar to what we see in the US. So what's going on, England? Maybe a little bit of a Potemkin village going on here? Maybe not having your worst minority schools take the PISA so as to artificially narrow the racial gap on this? While Wales is more honest, so they show a gap similar to what exists in the US, as well as letting their worst students 
period take the test that if you cut out the worst students taking the PISA test not only will your scores be higher like they are in England but if a disproportionate number of your worst students are black and Pakistani and Bangladeshi the result is going to be the, to narrow the racial gaps as well okay so this video is called the UK gaslight and the gaslight I'm talking about is people who use the GCSEs and more recently this little cat 3 IQ test so let's talk about that first the CAT-3 or Cognitive Abilities Test 3, these results were first found by a white nationalist who is now a PhD in psychology. So obviously I can't give his name. And I remember seeing this table for the first time on the first blog post that this was actually found on by this guy. Now the CAT-3 actually has a US equivalent called the COG AT7. And we can compare UK race gaps on the CAT3 to US race gaps on the COG AT7. They're the same test. And we can see that the black white gap on that is about the same in the US as it is in the UK. And given the ocean of IQ and standardized test data showing a 15 point black white IQ gap, we can use that touchstone to surmise that this test probably by design yields smaller race gaps than other tests do. So people who like to push the CAT3 results, they're making a big stink about nothing. They're bringing up six-year-old white nationalist backwash that was shown to not matter. But the real gaslighting comes from the GCSE data, or General Certificate of Secondary Education data, which shows what you can see here. Now, I don't know a whole lot about the GCSEs, but there are a few things that I do know that renders them very questionable for use as some sort of standardized test. First off, you can choose which GCSEs you want to take, and there are average race differences in what GCSEs they choose to take. So it's literally not a standard standardized test in the first instance. Second off, in these exams, coursework counts towards one's GCSE score on some of the GCSEs you're allowed to pick. Coursework graded by the teacher at your school. And these schools, of course, want to be put up in league tables showing that they have the highest pass rates and rich parents want to send their kids to the schools that have the highest GCSE pass rates or A star rates. And third off, there's tiering. So even within the math GCSE, even within the English GCSE, you can take a higher or lower tiered math course, for example. And white people tend to take higher tiered everything. So it's not the same subject, it's not the same tiering, and there's coursework graded by teachers. Any one of these things is enough to disqualify the use of GCSEs as a proxy for general intelligence. And when we look at the UK universities, whites do better when you control for the A level going in. Now, A levels aren't GCSEs, but they're taken in the equivalent of junior and senior year of high school in the US, and we're about 17 or 18. And they're tests, but they're tests taken after a, a whole course, leading up to the equivalent of a final where you take your A level. And as BuzzFeed has so kindly shown us here, whites do better in university for any given A-level score. Being white is worth about four A-level grades, or about one and one-third full grade level per test, since most people only take three A-levels. In terms of predicting how well they do at university, being white is worth a little bit more than a full grade level. These GCSE results are pushed like crazy by racists and advocates of European dispossession to try to gaslight you into thinking that the blacks and Pakistanis are a benefit to the UK, that European civilization doesn't need Europeans, and that you can just bring any old people in and they'll do great. Don't look at their criminality, don't look at their welfare use, don't look at their IQ scores or economic inactivity. No, look at the GCSEs. Look at the data that they made in their own little fun house called the British Public Education System, and oh look, in their little fun house, they were able to make the race gaps go away. Isn't that cute? But the British people, the phrase white British being redundant because that's the only British there are and the only British there will ever be, the British people were conned into accepting a bunch of Pakistanis, Bangladeshis, Africans, and Caribbeans being sold that these people would help the British economy. Of course, the British never supported it. It was imposed. But the justification of this was that these people were going to help the economy and they were going to be great for the economy and they were going to help with the looming budget issues. And the complete falsity of that line is manifest. These populations in the UK are fraudulent. 
Act. They were brought in on fraudulent pretexts. Their citizenship is a result of a con job. How the hell does having more NEETs, welfare users, and criminals help the British economy? It doesn't help. It was all a lie. And now you have the British people being fucking psyop into thinking that these non-British people are better than them. That despite being a privileged class of foreigners in league with the ruling class against the British people, that they're actually really oh so put upon. And that if you oppose these foreign agents acting against the British people, well then you're just a racist. Because the Home Office put a sticker on them and now they're a citizen. And if you oppose it, well off to the gulag for you. Look at me, I'm the Englishman now, and that's the biggest con of all.